Hello and good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome to this week's new episode of Breakfast with Boom. I'm your host, Mr. Boomstick XL. And ladies and gentlemen, like many shows before this, you go out of your way, you find some topics, you write them up, you send them to the folks that are going to be a part of the panel, and then something happens. You get an epiphany, whether that be on the toilet, in the shower, or just sitting there reading your phone. And that is exactly what happened this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, the news of the week, the news of the last two weeks, I should say, regarding the Activision Blizzard deal and what uh, documentation and statements from both PlayStation and Microsoft that have ruled social media. Well, more information has come out. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, I, I got to tell you, you know, we've heard some ridiculous things from Sony. We've heard some... Uh, tempered responses from Microsoft. But what I'm about to read to you is shocking. <clears throat> so much so that I cannot believe this came from Microsoft. Like this is the Microsoft that, my, that many people right on this panel have been calling for. I mean, you talk about giving the horns to PlayStation that's exactly what happened here. And again, I understand they are uh, statements that are being translated and maybe, maybe at some point we'll get someone that, uh, that, that translates it a different way. I, I couldn't tell you. I'm going to read verbatim. And, and I do want to shout out uh, Randall Thor 19 for this. And, and I say that because this morning while I was uh, getting ready to take Mrs. Boom to work, I watched his latest video, which is phenomenal. And if you don't know who Randall Thor is, well, man, my God, I, I don't know what rock you've been under. He's closing <laughs> in on 90,000 subscribers, a well-deserved accomplishment. I mean, he's been a, a staple uh, and, and has an amazing uh, Xbox Two podcast with Jez Corden from Windows Central that I religiously listen to. And these statements uh, I didn't even know existed because I have read some of the docu documentation, but I have not been privy to all of it. And apparently, somehow, I missed these. So before we get into those documents, let me introduce the panel. We have two special guests joining us. Noof Nogum, boom, boom, kaboom, is back in the room. What's going on, brother? How you feeling? Yes, indeed. Boom, boom, kaboom, baby. Yes, it is good to be here on Breakfast with Boom, the perfect place for me to be. Again, it's going to be a big show, fantastic panel, as always, and good to be back with uh, fellow guest Mav here with you guys. I uh, can't wait to get into everything. The chat is already hopping, so good times. I've been uh, just living life, man, but as you probably already know, I'm getting ready to jump back into the podcast scene full time on nice. September the 6th, but more about that later. Yeah, and you know what? The the world will be better for it. Uh, obviously, uh, we you know you've you've done some guesting. You've been on this show quite a few times since stepping away and kind of getting your health in order. Um, and uh, we're happy that that you have come to uh, a close with that, and that you're going to make your way back here because you know something. You do bring a unique uh, uh, way of podcasting uh, that a lot of people don't do, uh, and we're happy to have that to know that you'll be coming back. But we will get more information on that later in the program uh mav uh, you dropped some bombs last night on pm in the pm with pong soul uh listen how, welcome back brother thanks for guesting hey uh thanks for having me here usually not here on your friday show and i wasn't able to be there this tuesday either for xbox factor so i'm super happy to have the chance to sit down here with you and good old noof what's up noof how you doing man um yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We're going to a lot of spicy things to talk about, man, because th this is like, you know, we all have like the console wars and Twitter and stuff. You know what I mean? But there's like actual wars going on behind the scenes with the lawyers and the regulators and everything, which is uh, fascinating to see. And when the actual companies come come with the claws out instead of just the Twitter fanboys here and there, it's uh, it's really interesting to read, man. This is it. It's uh, it's pretty awesome, actually. I love that. I love this um new microsoft and 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 even sony I, I love the back and forth man it's gonna be a fun conversation well you know what what's interesting mav is sony is who we thought that they were mm -hmm. right they are the market leader they will say what they have to say in order to uh retain that leadership 
whether that be lie or cut or steal their way uh, through whatever they can do to make sure that this deal doesn't pass. Obviously, what they had to say is mm-hmm. literally irrelevant. Uh, it is uh, uh, it's hypocritical through and through. Oh, right? it's 100% yeah. hypocritical because we'll, we will get into the shenanigans that they have been known for. Uh, and uh, the fact that there are anti Game Pass clauses and contracts that came out in the in the Capcom leaks that has been posted out there for everyone to see. We also have seen wording from Sony where they have gone out of their way to uh, have um, uh, paywalls uh, or, or make payments to developers and publishers to keep said games off of Xbox Game Pass. Um, we do have a couple of quotes from people in the community of uh, one of which is Xbox university. Now here's the thing. I, I will say this right now. And he knows this cause we've had conversations. There's a good portion of the things that he says that I do not agree with. I'm going to, I'm going to be completely honest because a lot of the times he does go a little bit too far with the rhetoric, uh, almost to the point where. Uh, I, I I will not like or fa- or favorite or retweet because it is on the form of some of the stuff that Sony players do that I don't like. So I don't support that. But he did make a comment yesterday that I did favor, uh, that I did favorite, and I thought that it was uh, a pretty pretty damning statement. And it does make us sit back in the chair and think a bit. And I will read that live on the air momentarily. But let's continue with the introductions. Dreadpool, it is super awesome to have you back here, brother. What have you had for breakfast and how you feeling? Hey, and it's super awesome to be back every Friday. And I got to tell you, you won't believe what I had for breakfast today. And it's an odd one for sure because I even <laughs> think it's, it's odd myself. But I'm actually enjoying it. I made myself a salad. Holy, well, there you go. Right? Right? Breakfast. So, is, it, is it egg salad? <laughs> <laughs> no, just a regular lettuce and cheese Let, and a little green, bit of ranch dressing. Salad. Yeah, this is something, this right is something else. <laughs> so, bacon, in it, bacon in it, at least. No, no, not <laughs> nothing like that. Just the closest thing to the meat was the cheese. Croutons, wow. toast. Not nothing. no, no, just no. the the greens, cheese, and ranch dressing. Wow. wow. So, like I said, odd, but. Good it was on actually you to very have refreshing. the stomach for that this early in the morning. Holy yeah. matrimony. Well, it's early for you. It's like dinner time for me. That is true. That is so, very true. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, definitely uh, excited to be here. Uh, this is one of those um, monumentous days, I guess, we, we lead into without oh, yes. getting into the topics. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 would say, I would say that you're on to something. You know, we have been... Uh, you like I said, I, we were talking in the green room, and I've said this both Noof uh, and Dreadpool has set, have said this both publicly and behind the scenes that they want to see a more aggressive Microsoft. They want them to take a stance, you know, stand up, you know, add any adage you want there, you know, show them how much how big your balls are or whatever you want to use to uh, equate the conversation. That's fine, but th- what what I'm about to read to you is bonkers and what's even more bonkers dread is that the fact that microsoft straight up calls sony afraid they said that and i'm gonna read that momentarily but uh dread welcome back brother great to have you and last in no way least hey. the fuzzy one the best driver in the business what's <laughs> going on brother how you feeling good morning everyone glad to be here got some awesome guests got dread pulled back it's awesome to have you here in the Indeed morning it is Man, boom, we got a lot to <laughs> dive into. So I won't take <laughs> up too much time. It's it's so much fun to see uh, the the truth get uh, unveiled behind the scenes as far as all these little contract things and some of the shady stuff that some of these companies do. But uh man, can't wait to get into it. Let's let's do this. <laughs> it, hey, it is it is like I said, it is bonkers. What what was hey. said. Yes. Yeah, boom. Yes, sir. Do you, do you guys know? Do you know what a? Do you know what a? Do you know what a salad eater says before every meal? What's that? Let us pray. Oh, oh wow! There you go. <laughs> 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 yeah, we know that uh, Nuke is having some laffy taffy for breakfast, probably. Ah, indeed, <laughs> very good. I love. I love. I love the puns. Well, listen, ladies and gentlemen, we got almost three hundred people here, and we're only ten minutes in. I want to thank everybody uh, for tuning in. 
Uh, just to give an update, um, the uh, we are now at 80 channel members, which is it's it's crazy. Like I, I, I Mrs. Boomstick and I look at it, and we we you can't believe it. We are 52 subs away from 11K. I'm hoping to have that uh, all wrapped up and bowed up uh, by the end of the weekend. Uh, we're going to do another push to get some, you know, to get that done. We're hoping for 12K by the end of the year. Again, it's just personal goals that we want to set for ourselves. Uh, all of the uh, ticker tape that you see on the bottom, all of those uh, names that if you are a new channel member have been updated. Again, we are up to 80 channel members and we cannot thank you enough for that outstanding and ridiculous support. Um, but listen, folks, you're here for the juice, and I'm about to drop it for you right now. Uh, before I get into what Xbox University had to say, I do want to bring up exactly what was brought up on Randall Thor, who he made he made privy of this. I didn't I didn't know this information existed until listening to his video this morning, and I went and looked for it, and sure enough, I found it. And this is this is I'm going to read it verbatim, and then we're going to get into it. It says this, ladies and gentlemen, Microsoft also points out that they use the exclusive arrangements that have been at the heart of Sony's strategy to strengthen its presence in the gaming industry. Microsoft says that in addition to owning exclusive first party content, Sony has entered into agreements with third party publishers to secure other forms of exclusivity with respect to certain games, such as marketing exclusivity and exclusive exclusivity rights with respect to downloadable content. Seeing how Sony is a leader in the, in the, in the distribution of digital games, Microsoft sees Sony, Sony's concern about the eventual exclusivity of, of Activision's content as incoherent and it, that it only reveals, and I quote, the fear regarding an innovative business model that offers high quality content at low cost to players is threatening a leadership that was forged from a device centric strategy and focused on exclusivity throughout the years. In fact, Microsoft goes on to say that the ability to continue expanding Xbox Game Pass, Game Pass has hampered has been hampered by Sony's desire to inhibit such growth. Sony has paid for blocking rights to prevent developers from adding content to Xbox Game Pass and other competing subscription services. Uh, I mean, okay, so I'm going to stop right there. I mean, wow. That is, if that doesn't dro have you drop the stake into the ground, and say you shall not pass Sony. I honestly don't know what would. And what's interesting, Newf, and I want to go to you first because you're one of our special guests, is they use the word fear. Now, if you remember last week when this came out, one of the running narratives from many podcasts was that Sony was scared. And I think that last week it was a little overused, but now I'm not so sure. I honestly think that Sony is frightened. And to be honest with you, they have every right to be because like I said, folks, we are on the cusp of seeing an industry change that you're going to go to sleep on a Tuesday, wake up on a Wednesday, and Microsoft is going to have gone from third place to first and Sony first to third. And I say mm -hmm. that with absolute confidence because if you look at what Microsoft is currently doing, Right now, on Woot, you can find an Xbox Series S with a game for 200 bucks. That has been confirmed by Kay Asante, who's in the chat, by the way. Okay? Now, this is, uh, now Woot, if you didn't know, is a subs subsidiary of Amazon, and a lot of the products they sell are refurbs, but nonetheless, you can get an Xbox Series S for under $200. Now, that is through Root, but I would imagine that at some point, potentially this fall, Noof, Microsoft is going to drop that down, and I say that, the Series S, during Black Friday, for 200 bucks, potentially with a, a 30, a 60, or a 90-day Game Pass card, basically giving you 500 packed-in games for the price of $200. It's insane. 
it's uh, it, 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 it it's unmatchable deal and uh, again when you consider that call of duty not this year maybe not next year maybe not even in 2024 because again no one can really put a magnifying glass on how long the rights are for whether or not mm-hmm. Sony, uh, that Microsoft is not going to honor those rights, maybe they're going to pay the, uh, the 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 fine for breaking the contract. I I couldn't tell you. No one can find it. It's not out there in the ether. But when Call of Duty whatever, Call of Duty twenty four, Call of Duty twenty five drops into Xbox Game Pass, I find it unbelievably difficult that Sony is going to be asking of their players. To pay seventy six forty three if you live in New York, when you're gonna go and be able to pay, and again I said this yesterday, folks, and I will I will say it again, and I'm not a marketing manager, and this is again another million dollar idea for for anyone at Redmond. I will get no credit for this, but there is gonna come a point, Noof, where there's gonna be a billboard that's going to say for as low as five dollars a month, you can play the new Call of Duty and Xbox Game Pass day one. Because and it, and it's going to be a little fine print in the family plan. Think about that for a second. That 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 is going to potentially move not a few million. That potentially is going to move millions of players from PlayStation to Xbox because of the price of admission, the value proposition. Now, if I'm interested to get the, to, to get your point of Microsoft saying that they are afraid. Um, <clears throat> well, yeah, it's what happens here is, is the business model is changing, right? And, and every generation, essentially things, things have absurd. Hang on. Cat's jumping up on my computer. Hopefully it didn't shut everything down here. Um, you're, you're good, still here, guys? You're good. okay. All right. Cause yeah. cat just jumped across my screen. I don't know what the hell is going on here. Um, <laughs> look, essentially, um, Look, like I said, the business model is changing, right? And and we know that despite being, you know, uh, some of us like myself, a bit of a fossil in the gaming scene, uh, it's adapt or die. You know, Microsoft had to adapt in order to, you know, stay afloat, to keep the Xbox brand relevant, uh, stuff like that. And a big part of that charge was Game Pass. Uh, we knew as soon as Game Pass came out, we certainly knew when they dropped the day and date thing that uh, this was a game changer for the industry. You knew that it was a matter of time before it's the, the competition decided that they were going to uh, they were going to try different things. They were going to they were going to try to uh, either mimic or come out with something of their own. And some have tried and failed misery. Hence the uh, Google Stadia and stuff like that, right? Um, but Sony, like I said, they're 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 um, they're sometimes they're borderline confident and cocky, and maybe a mix of both sometimes. And uh, this this to them has is going to change the way that they approach the industry. It's going to change the way that uh, uh, that they want to do business, and we're already seeing that. We're already seeing that with Sony, with the fact that uh, you know they've changed their PlayStation Plus tier system. Right? They're trying to do these little things because they know that the longer Microsoft goes, the bigger value proposition it's going to continue to have for its fans. And like you said, boom. It, at some point, it's not about taking Call of Duty away from PlayStation or its fans. That's that's never Microsoft's intent here. Uh, and that's probably obviously one of the big sticking points and one of the things that's probably coming up in the whole, uh, you know, getting this deal to go through. But their point is, is they want to be now, they want to be the number one place to play. They want to be the primary place to play Call of Duty. For years, that was on Xbox. But over the last few years, we saw with Sony's massive console lead in the market, uh, um, and of course the marketing deals that they had with Activision for Call of Duty. We saw that you know Call of Duty started to become a little more prominent with the PlayStation brand. Yeah, right. It, so it, Microsoft it, listen, holds honestly, cards here. Huh? Yeah, yeah, to be to, to 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 add to your point, when people think of Call of Duty, they they don't think of PC, they don't think of Nintendo, which of course it's not there. They don't think of Xbox. They think of PlayStation. And there's a reason for it. That's why m- when Microsoft gave up the rights after the Xbox 360, I, I was in- incredibly taken aback because mm-hmm. it did so well for them. Sony jumped in. You cannot blame Sony for seeing and seizing 
an opportunity and they have used it. Look, during the last week's um, first set of documentation that came out, Sony came right out and said that their biggest third party developer uh, revenue stream is from Call of Duty. That's not surprising. The microtransactions, they make millions upon millions of dollars. Exactly. You know, a pragmatic eagle in the chat brings the players who play COD will never stop playing COD. COD is huge. It's a it's a massive mm -hmm. it's a massive get in the industry, right? It's it's a, it's the biggest thing is is it's a marketing thing. I mean, if you think of the games in the industry that move the needle, uh, whether you like them or you hate them, okay? Grand Theft Auto. I mean, it sold 100 what 170 million copies now. I mean, everybody knows the name. It's it it has its own. It's it, it's a phenomenon. COD is much like that. It's a phenomenon. World of Warcraft, another thing that's you know synonymous across the globe. There's these there's these certain titles. Or, you know, Fortnite is up there now. Like some of these games. So having marketing rights with with those tie-ins is huge. And like you said, this is where Microsoft's play is. It isn't about taking away the content. It's about having the leg up. It's about the advantage. And their advantage isn't about the console. Like I said, having the most powerful console in the world hasn't exactly. Uh, done them a ton of favors. People aren't rushing down to the stores to buy Series Xs because you can tell it's the most powerful console on the market. People are running down to the store to buy the best deal in gaming. That's where it's at. That's why the Series S sells. That is why uh, Game Pass is huge because it's the best value in gaming bar none. And this only just added massive clout when you're when you're going to say, yeah, I can still go into the store and I can buy Call of if you, especially if you're again a, a, a PlayStation centric owner, you got one option: you're going to buy it digitally, you're going to go physically in the store, and you're going to pay full price. Microsoft is not going to mark it down to fifteen dollars, uh, you know, to, to please anyone. They're 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 basically going to say you can either join the Game Pass ecosystem and you can literally get it for practically next to nothing, or you can continue on your old path, and that's fine. Most people aren't going to complain. I mean, at the same, you know, we, we've been buying Call of Duty games at full price since the day they came out, and so nothing really changes there. But again, it will draw more people into Game Pass, and you know, it, it's like the old, uh, it's like the old uh, philosophy of of uh, fast food restaurants. What was the biggest change for fast food restaurants? I mean, probably uh, coming the '90s, most particular drive-throughs, right? People that didn't get drive-throughs their businesses suffered and they went out of business and the ones that stayed open, the only reason they're still open is because they found other avenues to, to kind of mitigate that. But now in this today's age, what's the other thing that since drive throughs it's uh, skip the dishes businesses without skip the dishes and, and DoorDash and all those things are struggling now because most people are going to get food from these other places. This is the exact sort of model that we're in right now when it comes to the gaming industry. And you know what? The subscription services like Netflix and Hulu and these guys, they're also doing pretty much the same thing. In order to stay afloat in an over-competitive um, you know, market now with streaming, they got to offer something different. And everybody is buying up exclusivity on some factors. So, like, I'm not 100% complaining or blaming Sony for being a little bit ruthless here. They got to do what they got to do uh, because they want to keep their, their model going. Again, they're, they're refusing to sort of adapt. Um, the Series S scared them. The Game Pass scared them. They're, they're, they need to sort of find the reason to adapt. Or, or they're going to find their stock prices and things starting to plummet as, as Xbox continues to grow. I mean, at the end of the day, you can tout about, like I've said this a million times, you can tout about selling 120 million consoles. But if you cannot, uh, if, if you cannot actually make money doing it, it's all for naught. We know that Microsoft and Sony in particular are making very little on consoles, right? We know that they're either they're taking a loss or a practical loss. Yep. So... You know, Nintendo's the anomaly, but you look at Nintendo. Nintendo's got the most Switches sold, right? But they make money, and they're the anomaly because they make money on their first-party software alone. People buy Switches for Nintendo games and Nintendo games alone because there is no Call of Duty. There's yep. basically no Grand Theft Autos. There's, most of the largest games that are third-party are still not on Switch other than, say, Fortnite or something like that. So you, you see where we're going with this. Yes, Sony are definitely scared just to kind of cap this off because I know everybody wants to have their, their say in here. But uh, because, again, Microsoft is forcing their hands. It's you know They've shown their cards now. They know the Activision thing is in play. It's a matter of time before this goes through. 
and uh, and Microsoft, you know, seeing what's in the what's in the wind right now. Yes, they could potentially play dirty here, and I have fully endorsed them to do so. I'm going to take flack for that, but you know what? It's fight fire with fire. If your competitor is mm -hmm. going to start pulling, you know, dirty because this isn't about like like let's try to even the playing field. This is about taking the 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 players off the field entirely. It's about taking away options for your competitor. Uh, like I said, Microsoft's not going to take Call of Duty off. They're not taking the games no. off of PlayStation essentially. Um, they're making the Xbox brand more attractive. And with Xbox now going to TVs, like the apps and stuff like that, there's going to be a billion ways to play Xbox games. Whereas if you're a Sony person, essentially you're going to have your PC or you're going to be stuck to your PlayStation 5. And that's what they're counting on. They're counting on everybody having PlayStation 5s. But at the end of the day, uh, if you can play Xbox through a TV, on a phone, through a PC, through an Xbox, you can play it pretty much everywhere but your refrigerator uh it's it's pretty hard to ignore that that means big dollars it means advertising dollars it means a lot of people with a lot of eyes on the xbox brand it's huge for xbox like i said game pass has changed the industry in more ways than just hey we get to play all these great games at a, at a fraction of the price it's it's now dictated where the competition wants to go to stay competitive sony is doing great right now but that yeah. is sliding and it's going to change over time uh, and they're trying to find ways to mitigate that, to slow the curve. And this is where we're at with the whole thing, man. Great stuff, as always, Noof. And obviously, you know, you you, you delivered as expected. Look, I, I do want to there's, – there's a couple things I want to say. First of all, a huge shout-out. Let me get back on camera. I, know, I didn't I thought it was off camera. A huge shout-out. We have 500 people here, which is – bonkers this is still a very small channel right we're, we're just a, a hint away from 11k only been doing this for five years folks and I'm, I'm a late bloomer like you know remember i'm retired police officer turned podcaster right like like you know who who, who would have thunk it right uh big shout out to tom warren who is a senior editor at the verge he's in the chat folks which is again boop I can't believe it. Honestly, it's it's shocking. Tom, welcome to the program, brother. Hopefully you hang out and enjoy yourself. You like the commentary. Look, one of the things I keep hearing is Microsoft is going to kill Sony. Listen, folks, I'm here to tell you, play, the PlayStation brand isn't going anywhere. Now, I know there's been talk about them going the way of Sega and becoming a publisher. King David constantly says that. I think that the PlayStation brand is too important for that to happen. I think what we're seeing here, what we are witnessing is, let's just take a step back before I bring in Mav and, and we talk about some of the stuff that, was, uh, that, was, that came out uh, recently regarding the Brazilian regulators uh, documentation that was made public. Um, if you move, if you look as far back to the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 era, right? We saw that at the start of that generation, we had a very arrogant, un unapologetic Sony that shot themselves in the foot, right? Go out and buy, if you, if you, if you have to get a second job to afford a $600 console, you know, that, that, that comment hasn't still aged well, right? Later on in the generation, they were able to edge microsoft's xbox 360 they didn't sell as many consoles as they wanted but they they kind of stepped in it so to speak to start the generation and 360 pretty much reigned supreme on, on many fronts fast forward to the xbox one generation and the playstation 4 generation well we saw a roles reversal right we saw uh, a very overconfident Microsoft say some things. Donnie D, hey, if you if you need a console that's offline, you we got one for you called the 360. Again, didn't age well even in 2022. They had they, they you know they had they, they they had the wrong leadership running Xbox at that time, and with one video, one 65 second video, this is how you share games. Sony won the generation. Like it, it that one the generation for PlayStation. And they have still, they're still holding tight to that grasp. Listen, folks, they're at almost 22 million consoles sold. That's awesome for the PlayStation 5, considering the, the restraints that they have had with the chips 
and how and the yields and everything else that goes behind that. You talk about um, Microsoft, they're at 16, 000, uh, 16 million consoles sold. Not too shabby, right? And, and they're gaining, they're, they're, they're inching. We are, Mav, we are witnessing something that a lot of people never thought could happen. And that is Sony actually li letting, the grasp is slipping of market leadership. And if you look at what Microsoft is doing, where and Nuf had such a great uh such a great speech where you talk about well it, you, you there's going to come a point where the series s is going to be 200 bucks i mean that's it's almost inevitable right the family plan was just launched in colombia and uh where was the what was the second place uh ireland um and that's going to be coming to the states it's imminent right now does that happen over the summer probably not probably closer to the holiday, I would imagine we're going to see that. Um, and the value proposition on allowing up to five people for $25 a month uh, to, be, to, to have Ultimate Game Pass, which gives you cloud gaming, which gives you PC gaming, which gives you gaming on console. It's, it's unimaginable that that is a thing that is going to potentially happen. And when it does... Regardless of whoever Sony has deals with, and they obviously they're they're in bed with with Square because you know we know a lot of their games are not coming to Xbox. It's not going to matter. Microsoft, listen, they dropped the ball in 2022. I'm a, I'm an Xbox guy, so to speak. I mean, I own all consoles, and I don't have to give you my my you know re how many trophies I had to say that I like PlayStation. But the truth is, we're all disappointed with Microsoft. Three monster delays. And they don't really have a lot in the tank. They don't have a lot to offer. It, 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 it's kind of a crappy year for, for Xbox. But that's going to end next year. And then at, when we hit 23, and I know that we've talked about, oh, my God, we got to wait till next year, wait till next E3. I, I, I've heard it all. But we're going to get to 2023, and then it's going to be an onslaught. Then it's going to be on like Donkey Kong, all the way moving through 24, 25, 26, 27, and when Microsoft starts hitting all its switches with its first party, after the Activision deal is, is, is sewn up and put to bed, Mav, there's a reason why the word fear or people are saying Sony is scared. I say they're concerned. What are your thoughts of to what I just read earlier before Nuv uh, just completely knocked it out of the park? Yeah, I mean, I think Microsoft's responding to the blatant hypocrisy from Sony with their uh, remarks to the uh, Brazilian regulators. Um, it was interesting, you know, that we get a look at this because it's like a look behind the scenes at what these lawyers are actually using to try and sway these regulators to, to their side. Right. And for most of all the publishers, it was just like, OK, yeah, normal stuff, normal stuff, normal stuff. But then so, then Sony has like this plea. Right. Please don't let them do this to us, please, because they're going to take our business. There's nothing that can replace Call of Duty. It's a one of a kind thing. It's in a genre of itself. There's nothing like Call of Duty. It's so special. And like, it just looks so Microsoft was right. They did come across as scared for that. And now Sony's doing what they got to do. Right. Yep. They they have to do this. We, I expected this. I didn't expect to be able to see it. And I didn't expect Microsoft to clap back like this which was the most amazing thing because everything that everybody's been saying on a lot of the shows that you should be listening to uh, was basically just written word for word in a more lawyerly intellectual type by uh, Microsoft's lawyers in response to Brazil, because it was just blatant. Like, Hey, look, Sony has been doing this for years, uh, paying for exclusivity, paying for marketing rights. It's their whole business model. And it's all about affecting console choice and bringing people over to their ecosystem. So when we go out and we actually buy one of these uh, publishers, even though we're saying we're going to release the games on their platform still, they are going to come out and say that it's going to ruin their business because we took the potential opportunity for them to get a new contract for marketing rights and a sh first person shooter away. That just comes across as weak from Sony's perspective that they say they can't even make one, that they've said that this wasn't a genre of itself. And I said this on the show last night, you Sony thinks this is in a genre of itself because they don't know how to make a first person shooter. Yeah. Like their last what... first part, their, their last foray into first per or FPS games 
was Killzone at the launch of the PlayStation 4, and it wasn't. It it was decent, but it wasn't. They really they, that gave, good. they gave up on it, and instead they yeah, used yeah. you know the marketing rights and brand recognition to draw people into the ecosystem. They focused on what they did the best, which they do extremely well. These third person action adventure story based games that they win numerous awards for. And uh, but guess what? Like even Jim Ryan has said. With the existing model of selling just the premium experience on a premium box is capped, right? So he said you got to get beyond the console market. They're going to the cloud now. They're going. They're going to PC. They're looking at all these different avenues. Microsoft has already beaten them to that, right? Because Microsoft's way of getting into the market uh, and really getting past Sony and all these different barriers that were out there was giving value, right? Giving value. And ha- get, putting more into the tech that is pushing the industry forward, right? So this is as much about Microsoft changing the industry as it is about just te- technology, period, right? Uh, first it was music, then it was movies and TV, and then now it's video games. This day was coming. Sony knew it was coming. Everybody knew it was coming. The thing is they were not prepared to have to move to this model so soon. Yep. And Microsoft is forcing their hand, and they are begrudgingly doing things right now that they did not want to have to do in order to try and stay on top of what they perceive as the future. And now I think that Microsoft has too much of a head start right now. Um, Sony is still begrudgingly not even doing enough in their own service to gain a, a substantial increase in subscribers on their new uh, PS Plus Extra and PS Plus Premium tiers, right? Instead, it's more about manipulation of the existing numbers that they already had. and. Yeah. Um, it's pretty interesting that they won't even do something like put Gran Turismo 7 in there right now. They're their own freaking games, right, yeah. that are even been out for a while, that are not even selling very well. They are not even putting into their subscription service, right? They That's how little they want to do this right now. And I think that certain head-ups at Sony, maybe like a Jim Ryan, knows that we got to figure this out, guys, right? And the rest of the old hats are kind of like, no, we're going to sell these games higher price. We're going to have a high price console and it's going to be awesome. And we're that's what we're going to focus on. You know, um, the thing is, like, it's, it's changing. Like you like new said, like you said, boom, as well as like with the tech changing with the, uh, with the subscription model and everything taken over. It's not even just about the box anymore. Right. And then PlayStation's play was about consoles as well, which was interesting because Microsoft's looking so far beyond that. You mentioned the, the Game Pass uh, family plan, right? You men- We mentioned all these games that are, are not out yet are coming in 2023, right? Uh, and, and beyond. Microsoft is already gaining market share without a big first party lineup. It, dude, I, I, I want you to kind of just talk about that for a hot second because I don't think people understand what you're saying and whether the the relevance to this conversation look folks i understand this is a very big world right we can't we cannot look through the keyhole we must take and i I give credit to uh steel rain of living split screen for this he says let's take an rts view of 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 the world and i love that because it really does make a lot of sense a lot of people look through the keyhole and that's all they see and it's it's a very small minded way to think. Yeah, uh, it what, has what? been confirmed, Mav, by mm-hmm. Satya Nadala, that they have won three quarters in a row, outdueling the P- the PS Five in this country for next gen consoles. Now they have not beaten Switch. No one beats Switch. The only one that beats Nintendo is Nintendo, right? So, but again, please. Think about that for a second, folks. The bangers that are that the, the kid, as the kids say, uh, you know, the third person over the shoulder, story driven adult themed games, which I absolutely love to death, are not currently in Xbox Game Pass in a new form. There's some older stuff in there that's fantastic. Go, go play Hellblade One if you missed it. Wear headphones. Trust me, it's going to change your life. Right. There are games in there that will make you be like, wow, this service is really worth it. But they don't have Starfield there this year. They don't have Motorsport. They don't have Redfall. They don't have Hellblade 2. They don't have Avowed and Fable. And I I could just keep going and going. 
And Mav, somehow or another, they have for and again, what what are three quarters? It's not that's nine months, folks. Nine months. And they have been doing it. Now, are they edging them out? Are they crushing Sony? I don't think they're crushing anything, but the fact that they are outdueling Sony in this market proves that there is a seismic shift coming. Please continue, Matt. Yeah, the other aspect of that, even with, okay, you say we're, get, we're talking about consoles here with market share, right? And when we think about consoles, consoles specifically to Xbox are less important as they are specifically to PlayStation, right? Yes. 100%. Because with Xbox, you can access the ecosystem that they're trying to sell with Game Pass on your phone, on a PC, on a TV that's got an app built in. They're going to have the streaming stick. You can also have a cheaper box option with the Series S. And everything else, you can even access next gen games or current gen games on an old console on an Xbox One via the cloud as well, right? So there's multiple avenues and devices. If you don't even own an Xbox right now, guess what? You have access to Xbox. You have access to the ecosystem, hence the family plan, right? Do you think a, a family of five is going to go sign up for five Game Pass Ultimate subscriptions? No. No. Right. But with everybody having all these devices in their houses that have access to all these eco this ecosystem, they're inviting more people in by saying, OK, if you go ahead and provide one subscription to your family for, let's say, twenty five dollars, which is a rumored price. All of a sudden, all of these people get invited to the ecosystem. Now, how many consoles does that equate for? Who knows? And maybe one person wants to own a console, maybe two. But guess what? They are still accessing this ecosystem and spending money on all these different games. Right. Yeah. So that when we even look at this as far as gaining market share, that's only in one specific category to the bigger picture. Yep. 100%. And Xbox is leading by far in that category. And again, like you said, boom, without any of these big tentpole games this year, that is going to help them drive forward in the, in the years to come. So if I was Sony as well, I wouldn't be shaking up my boots as far as scared that my existing business is going to go away. I think they have a substantial loyal fan base that's going to stay with Sony. They're going to be able to still stay in business, but are they going to lose market share? Yes, because the market is growing yep. and growing and growing and their market would stay potentially the same or potentially even a little bit less, right? So when you have this whole business exploding with gaming and you're like saying, okay, well, we're just going to stay the same, but then somebody takes your biggest uh, marketing ploy away, that's why they're pissed off right now. That's yep. why they, because guess what? Now they have to figure out a way to move forward even faster into this new way of doing things than they ever wanted to. Uh, look at those games that you even mentioned, like, like, you, okay, you got Indiana Jones, you got Starfield, uh, you were going to have Elder Scrolls six, Fable, Everwild, uh, if that ever Wild happens, five, Perfect Dark, six, um, Avowed, Gears 6 is going to come, Ground, uh, Grounded is finally getting its full release. I mean, there's so many games, uh, State of the K3, Forza Motorsports, there's so many games that we already have announced for Xbox right now yeah. that we know mm -hmm. are in the pipeline. Then we have a numerous amount of projects that we know are in the works because we've been told about it. We also count, uh, add contraband to that list as well. Um, Guess what? We only know about like what three or four actual Sony games that are after God of War. We know about uh, Wolverine, Spider Man. We know about Spider Man Two. Um, is there any another big game that's been announced beyond those two? Right? I mean, I just listed like what like eight or nine Xbox games, right? And that's not including all those other projects. Yeah, Xbox has this stable just <laughs> being pumped away at right now behind the scenes. And once that avalanche gets dumped at the feet of all of the consumers out there, and you can say, I'm going to go get a Game Pass subscription for $25 for my entire family, and they can play on whatever device they want to. And then I also, if I want to go get a console, I can get one for two to $300. Or if I want the premium experience, get one for $500. Or if I got a kick-ass PC, I can also play there. 
What and wins? Call of Duty is now first and party. Call of Duty will be in that subscription, <laughs> and Diablo crazy, Four dude. will be in that subscription, and the all those Riot games for PC. You're going to get access to all of those things as well. I didn't even like, equate that into the conversation, but you're dude, right. Remember that Riot deal is it's much bigger than anybody and it's realizes big, right now. Right, and it's not big. I mean, it's big for this country. But the, the 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 importance of that for the Asian region, where Microsoft is trying to make headway, which they have failed for decades, is why this deal was made. Because remember, ten years ago, fifteen years ago, people used to stand online for three days to get a new console. They don't do that anymore. They're mobile gaming. They're playing in cafes. They're playing on their tablets. They're playing on their pewters. Right? Yeah. I yeah. mean. And, and again, what always wins over and, and is over anything else. If you got a good quality product and it is it, the value is value far superior yep. value in people's wallets. Number one reason and new said this earlier, why people make choices with with their products. Right. And it is an easy decision to buy into a subscription service uh, that allows you so many different options and so much uh lowering the gate uh, of access accessibility across across the entire uh portfolio of devices and everything while meanwhile your competition has raised the barriers with up, upping the price of games and all this yeah. kind of stuff is this going on so there's a reason why the market share is actually uh, uh shifting a little bit right now and and again that's only one metric that's just in console sales new so yeah sony is n- a little bit nervous they they got their their prize uh i was gonna say their prize pony taken away from them uh but they did like the call of duty marketing rights were huge for brand recognition because it got the casuals in yep right it brought the casuals in it was like okay i'm just gonna buy call of duty and i'm gonna get a playstation i'm good right yeah i'm Mm -hmm. gucci you know got my ps5 i got my card and you know i'm good you guess what now you're gonna have people saying well you know you don't even have to buy it Right, you know, you just get played on a TV year. later on this year and, when Samsung fact, releases the 22 TVs. Yeah, and in fact, you can play every Call of Duty that's ever existed, like on on that service, right? So, like, what you would you rather do that? And also, remember, like, the whole game sharing thing with with Sony was like, here's how you share games, right? Once this family plan things announced, like that, it's not going to age very well when one person can have account and they can share games with five people. Yep. Right. Like, yeah. it's just this this the technology has pushed us so far forward and we've been saying it for a couple of years now that value trumps everything else. Right. And it's just coming, it's coming full force. Now and you see, you see with the language that Sony was using, you know, they're trying to do everything they can to keep it the way it is for as long as possible, but they see the writing on the wall. They're going to, going to have to make the shifts. That's why they begrudgingly did the PS plus tiers. Like Anouf was talking about, they did the PS plus extra. They did the PS plus premium. Um, they just got to do better with those services right now to help get them going even better because right now you're just not enough value to draw in the masses, right? You got to have some big games drop in those. You got to have some first party stuff. So even if it's not brand new, like you got to do better with your own service if you want to really drive that forward. And I've uh, worried that it might be too little too late and they're just going to kind of, you know, play second fiddle with that whole services thing for a long time. And that might do damage to, to their business. So, well, you know, look, what we could look back at and say is during the Xbox One era and the PlayStation 4 era, the success of Sony, the dominance that was Sony in that generation forced Microsoft to take gaming more serious, right? Remember, they only had five studios post, I mean, pre E3 2018, Right. This is this is when Phil Spencer was getting into his own. Uh, this is right after his big promotion. Um, and we saw the acquisition of five studios and the announcement of the initiative. And it has just been one seismic shift after another. Sony has kept very, very uh, close to the vest with what they have done successful. And that is the old dinosaur way of. You buy said game, you play said game. And Microsoft has changed that, and we're seeing that change today. At some point or another, like I still don't think what Sony's offering for $18 a month 
is as valuable as Game Pass because they 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 don't they don't have day and day games. And like I said, I've told the story before. I am a premium uh, tier member on PlayStation because Sony offered me the remainder of my subscription, which ends the twenty fourth of February in twenty three, for thirty three bucks. I was buying Stray, which I am playing right now, and I absolutely love it. Right. So I was like, well, if I if I buy Stray, I, th- I think it was either twenty five or thirty bucks. I'll just upgrade my subscription. Now I can't guarantee that I'm going to uh, re up for the hundred and twenty a year because everything that they have in PlayStation Plus, which is a, an amazing collection, I currently own. I buy all their first party games, so it's not an inherent value. More games like Stray, first party day and date. Then I'm I'm all locked in. Here's my 120 bucks, not a problem. I won't even I won't even bat an eye. Just charge the credit card. It's good. Microsoft has figured out a way to now force Sony into this new subscription service, which launched last month. And I think they're they're going to force their hand once again. And I think that at some point, I don't know when, they are going to absolutely put day and date in there. And I think they're going to be better for it. Because they go, they're, they're going for the juggler with those sale. Buy the the, the one seventy six forty three for the uh, for the New York price after tax. I think they would be much better off having people, and they have a very loyal fan base for Sony that will gladly pay their eighteen dollars if they can get a game like The Last of Us remastered, or I mean the the remake uh, in there. And that, and I, and I think that is a lost and missed opportunity. For Sony to to test the market, they could have easily said only top tier, only top tier premium members get the Last of Us remake in there. And they could have easily seen and test the waters whether or not that was a business model that would be successful. And I think it would be. Obviously, the Last of Us is a legendary legacy title. I mean, it's been remade and remastered so many times. It's 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 ridiculous. But it's still one of the best stories ever told in gaming. Now, you may disagree with me, but I love that game. I'm not spending. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, Sony. I'm sorry, PlayStation. I'm not I'm not buying it until it's 20 bucks or it's in or it's in PlayStation Plus. I'm not spending 76 bucks on a game that I've beaten twice uh, and played on the PS3 and the PS4. I'm, I'm just not going to do that. Um but it would have been a great opportunity for, for Sony to test the waters to see if they could have gotten the people that maybe wouldn't have went out and bought this game for 76 bucks to subscribe. I guarantee you their numbers would have went through the roof, but they didn't do that, so we'll never know. Uh, I do want to catch up on Super Chats before I bring Dreadpool in, who, who is now, we, we almost turned into a firefighter slash podcaster, and we'll get that information momentarily. Uh, first Super Chat of the day comes the way of a good friend of the program, Don Otaku, drops an outstanding $5 Super Chat and says, the savageness comes from the fact that Microsoft lawyers aren't trying to be buddy-buddy like Xbox usually is. Cor- absolutely correct. Shooter. Good friend of the program, shoot and and by the way, he's older than me. Shooter, sorry, brother, had to, I had to shout you out. Uh, uh, Shooter twenty eight fifty three drops a very generous twenty dollar super chat and says, "Good morning, just morning here in Australia. Uh, boom and panel, it's uh, it's it's brekkie time. Oh, well, he means breakfast. Uh, so have some ham and eggs on me." I uh, hope all of our brothers and sisters in the chat are well and safe. Thanks so much for that. And yes, enjoy your breakfast, brother. I, you know, I, my breakfast was just toast, and my lunch is going to be apple slices and a, a protein shake. I'm boring, but remember, I'm trying to. I, I'm the lowest weight I've ever been. I'm 209, and you know, I'm 52. So to take weight off, it's 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 tough. So I have to I have to do it tonight. I'm having pizza. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to enjoy the hell out of myself. But uh, 901, the gamer drops. Uh, who's been a member for two months? Uh, uh, for, uh, he actually doesn't say anything. Well, listen, first of all, 901 the game, a welcome, brother. Thank you for being a channel member, super appreciate that. Maxis Coma drops a five dollar super chat. Thank you so much for the generosity. Uh, we also have, um, on the bright side, drops a ten dollar super chat and says, What if Sony's marketing agreement with Activision prevents Activision from putting Call of Duty titles in Game Pass? Will Microsoft <laughs> pony up the penalty? 
uh, to Sony and break the agreement. Well, the agreement is going to run out. Again, I don't know when that is. I don't think anyone actually knows because no one's really saying, and I don't know if they're allowed to say. Um, if I'm Microsoft, uh, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. They're spending so much money on this deal. I would just pay and break the contract and be like, listen, you know what? You know, you, you got Call of Duty this year. Okay, not a problem. Next year, they're taking a break. There's not going to be a new Call of Duty. There's going to be Warzone 2, right? But there's not going to be a proper Call of Duty uh, uh, you know, for 23 because they're going to give the studios a break and decide what they want to do with them. And for 24, I'm going to be honest with you, I, I, I would just pay. But I'm not a money man. I'm not a money marketer. I don't know how much it would cost. Uh, it would if it would cause problems for Microsoft or it wouldn't. But they normally honor the deals. But this is too big to I think to just sit on your hands. But again, we will know in time. Tyson uh, Buajor. Uh, uh, drops a very generous $8 super chat and says, uh, 2023 will prove a lot. Activision Blizzard deal, Call of Duty, Starfield, Family Plan, and many first-party games in Game Pass could be the start of Xbox taking over the rest of the gen. That's a fantastic point. And a good friend of the program who has been a channel member, folks, for 34 months. My God, Chaos Theory. Thank you for supporting the channel. He says, good morning, boom. Happy Friday. Best podcast ever. Thank you very much for the compliment. Thank you for supporting the channel and being here as always. Edwin Garcia. who uh, well, Welcome, Edwin, brother. I hope you're doing well. He drops. A $5 super chat and says, I can't wait to listen to Sacred Symbols today. Yeah, I love Colin and those guys. I don't always agree with what Colin says, because he gets in his feelings. And Colin, if you know, if you watch his show, he's not a guy that shies away from telling you about yourself and about the situation. We you know we, we know what his opinion on it. But yeah, I, I can't wait to see what uh, I, I watch them from time to time. I do like Colin a lot. Uh, he says, I can't I uh, can't wait to listen to Sacred Symbols today uh, to how much they downplay the whole situation. Yeah, he, he does that from from time to time for sure. Uh, Dreadpool, or should I say firefighter Dreadpool, uh, I, I want to read another excerpt that I think is relatively important to the conversation that we continue to have. And this is what the other uh, part that Randall Thor talked about in his video that I had to add to today's uh, show. He says, Microsoft believes that what Sony fails to mention when they in, when it insinuates that Game Pass could achieve unattainable leadership in subscription services it's its own leadership position on digital distribution of console games. And this is, uh, I quote, this is from Microsoft. Sony is, in fact, the largest digital distribu distributor of console games. Therefore, Sony's concern with the potential, of comp potential competition of, of Xbox Game Pass simply reflects the usual resistance of traditional incumbents to competition on merit represented by disruptive players microsoft also says that this complaint to the services such as xbox game pass also reveals sony's real concern uh and i, I think i might have mentioned this before but i'll say it again the fear that the innovative business model that gives consumers access to high quality content and lower upfront costs threatens its position as leadership in the gaming industry, with Microsoft moving away from a device-centric business strategy in the sense that gamers must buy ex expensive PCs or consoles to have access to the best quality games towards a more consumer-centric, gamer-centric way of doing business. Uh, Dread, there's a, there's a lot to unpack here, and uh, I'm interested to get your opinion. You've heard, first of all, both Noof and Dreadpool have completely knocked it out of the park. Their, their points of view were spot on, unbelievable. I'm interested to get your point of this. Obviously, you're a working dude. You have a family. You have responsibilities outside of gaming. Is Microsoft doing something that Sony refuse, refuses to do? All right. So first of all, we got over 600 people watching. Make sure you guys like and share this. That's bonkers. Let's, let's make this this Friday a good start of a of a weekend. You know, I mean, <laughs> we you, are having Red. a good time here. Uh, let's do that. And then for the firefighter, uh, let's let's downplay that a little bit. What really <laughs> what happened was my wife saw smoke bellowing 
out of uh, the back of somebody's roof. It was actually a bonfire, and the way oh. that the wind was blowing the smoke, it looked <laughs> like it was bellowing out. But you would have jumped into action if you and needed I, to. I literally, yeah, I literally jumped out there. <laughs> And that's why I was like, I'll be right back. There might be an emergency. And once I saw that, I'm like running across the street, going to the neighbors. And uh, I jumped to the back to see exactly what was going on before I like busted down their front door. So that's, it, well, it listen, wasn't it wasn't nothing. Doing, so you, you're doing the Lord's work. You could have saved someone's life. Thank goodness it wasn't anything more serious. Yeah, it's just, you know, you, you know, being a neighbor, being a good neighbor. And this is being this is what the community is about. Right. Indeed even even is, right? physically yes. or on Twitter. <laughs> You have to be a good neighbor. And that's what some people don't understand. You know, there's there's that thing here, right? But back on to what we're talking about here, right? Um, let's see. Where do we start? There's so many different ways that I was writing all this stuff down with my notes. Um, but let's go with the console numbers, right? Being, being uh, the digital leader, right? Right. Sony kept on saying, hey, we got these numbers. Right. How many times have everybody been pushing that Sony has sold so many consoles? Right. That that right there tells you that they have a, a lot of strength because wait a second. Didn't we talk about before many times in the past that Sony? Um, what was it again? They pushed the publishers influence. On yes. putting, you know, putting their content on their platform because they have the numbers in consoles where Xbox doesn't, you know, and Xbox is like, yeah, we, we can't compete with with console numbers, but we'll um, what we have is user interaction. You know, we can show you how many users are actually playing our games where how many how many PlayStation 4s did you buy? Boom in your in a total lifetime uh for me personally i i could tell you what me and my brother bought well we're, we're good for about 10 and i'm good by myself by six right uh, i bought i but bought a you... playstation 4 then i bought the uh special edition for um destiny then i i wind up getting um the playstation uh 4 pro then my wife surprised me with the god of war edition uh, so yeah, I, last gen I was good for four. My brother, I, I, I no, I think we were good for eight. My brother bought four, same four I bought, but I, he bought four as well. Okay, so did you buy God of War ten times between you and your brother? And let's include no. your nephew because I'm sure you bought your nephew a uh, PlayStation um, yes. subscription. So mm -hmm. that's three subscribers, right? Three users with at least a minimum of ten consoles. Did you? Yeah buy 10 versions of those digital games i no. did not no correct you know you may well you may have doubled up let's say for your nephew all right so out of those 10 you your brother and your nephew that would be a t maximum total of three games you see what i'm saying you see what i'm getting at but sony's pushing the numbers of the uh the consoles that there's so many more out there there's there's this much more opportunity and a lot of and you know don't get me wrong there is that much more opportunity but we also got to remember sales doesn't always equal sales when it comes to the the end results right because you once you buy a console you can be buying a whole bunch of software but you're not buying a whole bunch of software for each of those consoles so yeah. Well, the um, software sales numbers were down, what, like 26% year, year yeah, over year? Yeah, right? it, My, I mean, it, it's... it's yeah. yeah, so when you when you look at it, and, and they're pushing the publishers to make games for them and not for Xbox. You know, we've already seen that they've done this. We've seen that they've done this with their, their strategies. You know, and granted, this is all business, right? Business is business. So I don't fault them for doing that. I fault Xbox for not, I don't know, pulling out the cojones and showing off what they got and, and, you know, doing their own version of it too, payback, you know, and this is, this is what this whole thing with Brazil is it's payback. You know, you've, you've been dogging on us so much. You've been doing this so much, you know, finally the kid that's being picked on is, is finally had enough of it and he's just gone full on and retaliate, you know, I, um, I agree. I, my I, wife, I, my I, wife is giving me notes in the background. <laughs> she, <laughs> okay. Her input is, um, she doesn't think that they released enough consoles on purpose. Was this Sony? No. Yes. 
Yes. So this way it keeps the the interest the interest high because if it's hard if it's you know how it's stuff very is scarce old to buy. Nintendo tactic. Yeah, that that would be a Nintendo tactic. Yeah. And then you know they claim can, to have the numbers. Guys, can you guys just imagine if Steve Ballmer was still in charge over at Xbox? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I, can only, I can only imagine the choice words he would have to say. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. He he would. He would he would be throwing out some f bombs. I I could see that. You know, um, he was a madman. Yeah. He oh, was. he he he's still exciting to watch, and and it, it just just pay attention to stuff he he still does. Every he does you don't see it as often now, but back back in the day, you can imagine if he was still here, there'd be a lot of stuff going on. But I mean, you know, with with everything's being said, right? We were talking about um, diversification. With, you know, everybody was like, oh, why does Xbox have kitty games? No one likes to play Super's Lucky Tale. That's not the game I'm looking for. I I'm looking for twice, the AAA uh -huh. game. But twice. yes, they came up. They came out with a revision of the same game, but they made it better. And that's why it's called new. Yep. Um, so it's not really the same game, but it is. But it isn't, you know, but hmm. what has Sony done? They stayed with the trends. Sony is stuck with the trends that work for them. And it's. It's their thing, right? That they know because they control it. They control the narrative, and that's the whole pro the problem. Is Microsoft has never unzipped and showed them this is what we got. You know, they they've just held back, right? But what happens? Sony, because they control the narrative so much, you got games like Killzone, right? You guys talked about this earlier, Killzone, and what happened? If if tended to to flop, you know, they yeah. didn't. Put more in effort into it. What has Microsoft done with Halo? Right, three four three is considered a flop of a comp of, of a, a studio. Right, that's typically what everybody's saying. It's a flop. It's a flop. But yet they're still pushing out content. They're still pushing out content for Master Chief Collection. I don't know why they yeah. should stop that and turn that stuff into Infinite and then bring make Master Chief somehow into the Infinite. And then you're done. You, there's your game. There's all your stuff that you need a backwards, comp you know. But but that's the, that's the thing is Microsoft still pushing out some of these games and still supporting them, where, you know, they 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 shut it down. So sometimes they're rightfully so that you know each one shuts down. But I mean, we needed a Halo competitor. We needed something from Sony that other than relying on third party developers for the their first person shooters. You know, and then relying on this and then saying, hey, look, um, I know I'm, I've been the bully, but, you know, I'm, I'm hot shit. But I, you know, they, they, they're they taken away from me. They they took this away. I, I find not, it pretty ironic playing that they're playing coy, to be honest right. with you. Yeah. But but that's the thing. They're, they're playing victim, but they're yes. the bully. Yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. in the meantime... Microsoft's been the sleeping giant, you know, what was it? Speak softly, but carry a big stick. And they mm -hmm. have been, yep. you know, they just haven't been swinging the stick yet. Well, now you know, the, the whole so. Kumbaya thing, right? Kumbaya, right? Everybody's like, Ugh. well, they've been doing it on purpose. You know, they know if they come out swinging full on that everybody's going to come out against them. So they've been playing, they've been playing nice with everybody and they're just tired of playing nice while Sony is still backstabbing them even though they're business partners right they're still business partners they still have contracts together to work with azure to do this to do that they're still they still have to play nice to a degree but xbox doesn't you know so that's that's the difference microsoft has to play nice xbox doesn't that's and well, get rid that's, of these guys yeah. no no I, 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 again Unbelievable points, Dred. One hundred percent, and I and I agree. I, I I think that yeah. I mean, I I can't I can't say for sure if Sony is pulling a Nintendo and they're doing because that worked very well for Nintendo. Uh, I remember uh, when I worked for Funkle, and remember, folks, I'm old, so I've been I've been around I've been around for a long time. Uh, uh, N sixty four games were one hundred and fifteen dollars because of supply and demand. And mm -hmm. that's how, the, and, and uh, Nintendo, what, what would Nintendo do? And what has Nintendo done notoriously is hold back stock to get the fever pitch up with the fans. And then they put this stuff out and they drips and drabs and everything always sells for Nintendo, right? Then nothing's on the shelf. And I mean, th that could very well be with Sony, but uh, listen, Fuzzy, I want to bring you in on the conversation. I know you've been sitting there idly uh, waiting. Uh, I do have a specific point 
that I want to read regarding another thing. Uh, mm-hmm. These are these the, the, these are five reasons Microsoft claims uh, that this whole thing, the, 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 these these points that Sony is making is wrong. And again, this comes from the documentation that was uh, uh, put out there by the Brazilian uh, government. And uh, it says this. Uh, it also lists five reasons arguing against Sony's claim that the addition of Activision Blizzard games to Xbox Game Pass would lead to an unattainable lead in subscription services for Microsoft. And according to Microsoft, this claim is wrong because, and here are the five points, uh, it's not part of Microsoft's strategy to remove content from, from players, and Call of Duty will still be on PlayStation as a paid title. Data shows that players, uh, his point two, data shows that players see subscription services as only one way to pay for games. Point three, Sony claims, uh, Sony's claim ignores the dynamic nature of subscription services and the fact that Sony has its own two. The fourth point, though, is redacted. Uh, which is shocking. Um, and the fifth point is there are numerous other game distributor uh, distribution channels and subscription services, many of which include content that isn't available on Xbox. Now, based on these excuses, uh, you know, these points that Microsoft is saying that Sony's whole claim is a farce, I'm interested to get your opinion on everything that has been discussed so far, Fuzzy. Uh, does Sony have every right to have great concern that they will, in fact, eventually, not today, not tomorrow, maybe not next year, I don't know, but eventually they will lose the grip of market leader, potentially seeing a seismic shift to third place? Uh, they have the right to be concerned, but... It- They've kind of done it to themselves. I mean, all these years of paying for exclusive rights or having marketing rights where you have exclusive content for time periods that are at one point, it seemed like it was, uh, you know, limited to just a year. Now, it seems like some of those are two years plus in some regards. They kind of shot themselves in the foot without, you know, I guess, pivoting on what's becoming a, a more useful trend as far as revenue from a company standpoint. Not not that I'm this business marketing genius or anything like that, but when you look at the games as a service model that Xbox has been doing for a while, the games are able to live longer than the normal expected life of a, you know, a single player game, let's just say, where the single player game old model of like where Grand Theft Auto used to add DLC later on to, you know, rejuvenate some of the interest in the game and, and bring more revenue in. It didn't seem like Sony was interested in doing any of that. They just they would put out these quote unquote bangers and, you know, oh, we sold 10 million. Oh, we sold 20 million. Although they've had quite a few in between there that didn't reach those numbers. But that was what they, you know, would beat their chest about. And like we uh, Dreadpool was talking about earlier, you know, selling hundreds of 117 million consoles. I think it is what they're at now. And a lot of us here in the community, especially us enthusiasts, gaming enthusiasts, have like two or three consoles to our name or more and and we're only buying the software once so that attachment rate from from that standpoint is you know that's nintendo's territory where attachment rate is usually closer to 50 percent. everybody else kind of you know hopes and dreams they can get to that point but um you know in the in the grand scheme of things Sony put out these single player games now they're looking at the games as a service model where they're going to have these 10 games coming out they should have started that a long time ago and they've had the games in their you know back catalog that they've could have converted over easily like i i hope this whole you know clap back from microsoft pushes them to make a socom to bring back resistance to bring oh uh, dude back, i yeah, would love like a that. new socom dude i've been banging that drum for years and resistance is one of still mm-hmm. one of my favorite playstation 3 games the first resistance is a freaking masterpiece dude and, and another one that uh, Mav and Pong brought up on their show yesterday was uh, Motorstorm, which was one of my favorite. Oh on PS3. my god, dude! We were talking about that the other day. Motorstorm. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping that it comes to the service because I don't care about trophies with that game. Mm-hmm. I remember playing Motorstorm the demo, and that's yeah. all I played for like a month before the <laughs> game came out. It was so freaking good. Yeah, I would go to the stores to play Motorstorm. 
Dude, yeah. that's how good was that game? Motor right? Storm three, not so much. Two yeah. was eh, but one. The first one was is it was just gold, <laughs> crazy good. And and see, that's the thing. Uh, Sony's out here claiming that you know nobody can replicate Call of Duty and everything, and and Microsoft, you know, wholeheartedly pointed out why that's not necessarily the case. And Sony has a lot of in its own library that they could push to, you know much higher levels as far as you know brand recognition brand loyalty to be able to compete on the same level with their subscription service but they choose not to they choose not to put crunchy roll in their subscription service they choose not to put you Which know is ridiculous every, by the way they, they don't even like and and they, i don't mean to bring up like a, an off the wall topic but it's like this whole ps plus premium service was touted to have like the back and pat, like this was going to be their response to Microsoft's back and pat, where they have like some of the PS1, PS2, and maybe some PS3 games in there. And whatever they put in there initially is seems like that's it. They don't really have interest in putting any more in there. So it, it, it they have the opportunity to seize the moment and they're like stumbling all across the board because it, I don't know if it's that they're scared or shook or what, but it, it just seems like they're not really putting in the effort to to change with the times. It looks like they still like you guys addressed earlier. They still want to sell just the console and hope for the best that they can get these marketing deals and convince publishers or influence them to you know put their software only on their box as opposed to the other box. I mean, the whole concept of them paying for you know, excluding stuff from other services, which yes, a lot of companies do similar things, but, and I've seen people on Twitter and elsewhere say, okay, well, Microsoft does the same thing, but usually that, that same thing is like perfect example. Uh, some of the games were um, postponed for Luna, uh, which is more of a direct competitor with, um, you know, game pass per se. So they they'll put like a stipulation. Okay. It can't be there the same date or they'll have something in the contract stating that, you know, a game that launches on one service needs to uh, launch on our store the same date or something like that, where it, it's more for, I wouldn't say equality, but it's, it's like parody to some extent. So if a dev is going to say, Oh, I'm going to mainly focus on PlayStation. Well, if you want to put that on Xbox, you need to put that also on our box at the same time, unless there's some, you know, standing contract out there. So that's typically all that Microsoft has really done when it comes to paying to keep things away from the other. And it's not really even paying to keep it away. It's just basically doing the normal, you know, standard, you know, exclusivity thing, which if you look at it, I don't think Microsoft has had anything that's lasted that much more than six months other than maybe the dev taking a little bit longer, like maybe eight months where games like medium or the ascent didn't come to PlayStation right off the bat. But look at tunic tunic was like what? 30 days. I think the whole deal with uh stalker two is only geared for like two months. If that, um, I think division was the last big one that they had where it was 90 days for like the DLC content um, after the whole tomb Raider, you know, I wouldn't say it was a debacle, but it was like the the outroar from the PlayStation fan base. And even some Xbox enthusiasts like McCafferty were like, oh, this isn't fair that, you know, Microsoft gets the exclusive rights for a year. But yet everybody's silent about, well, not everybody, but those same people are silent about like uh, Final Fantasy or, or Spoken or other other third party related titles and things like that. But uh this whole thing with Sony just crying in their their milk about you know Microsoft is is being unfair and you know the, this could influence the future purchases and so forth. It they've been doing the same stuff, if not worse, <laughs> for yeah. these past few months, years. Yeah, uh, yeah. So someone years. even suggests decades. Yeah, and and it, the whole crossplay thing. Oh well, if you're going to put it on this other console and it's going to have crossplay, well, we want you know a percentage of the profits that we might have lost because you did crossplay. Like that was a thing, and people don't really want to you know acknowledge that that PlayStation is that kind of uh, shady company <laughs> to some extent. It's like okay, you're going to tell me I have to pay you. To allow this game to be playable amongst everybody because you may have lost a certain percentage. I mean, come on. So I'm I'm all for you know Microsoft's lawyers clapping back. Yep. I, I I honestly wish the executives at Xbox 
used the same language in some cases when it came to referring to Sony. Um, not that they need to, but it, it would be nice to see sometimes. But um, yeah, Sony, it, they better hurry up and, and change their their approach on things. Uh, yes, I get their posturing for, you know, wanting to maintain their, their, you know, marketing lead or marketing share and stuff like that. But yeah, they, they need to grow a pair themselves and, and stop doing these backdoor deals and start focusing on what they have in front of them and, and compete in that regard. And, you know, kudos to Microsoft's lawyers for, you know, clapping back the way they did. So that's all. I, 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 abs I absolutely agree. I, I definitely think you're onto something for sure. Uh, let me catch up with some of the super chats before we move on to the Red Fool topic because it's it, it's it's an important topic to have because that was one of Microsoft's big games that was delayed. Now, obviously, it's from Arcane Austin in Texas. Um, and listen, all you can say about about Arcane is that they don't miss, right? Now, maybe not every game is for you, but you can't argue that Deathloop wasn't again game of the year contender last year prey was another one that uh th that did a lot of things that they're known for um they had two stealth games dishonored one and two were i didn't like dishonored two as much as i loved dishonored one i, I don't know why that was uh, i played through it i i enjoyed it but i loved Dishonored one. Uh, when you look at their pedigree, it's only safe to potentially assume that that Redfall is going to be another masterpiece. And the more that I personally see of it, the more I'm excited. I don't mind having to wait, but they are going to show 30 minutes of single player gameplay at QuakeCon. That's happening uh, in a couple of weeks. 30 minutes, not 10 minutes, not 13 minutes, not 22 minutes, 30 minutes. To me, that screams absolute confidence in what they have in front of them and how far along the game is. I'm wondering whether or not this delay, how, how, how much of this delay is, is really just a polish I don't know. I know that it's coming for first half of 23. A lot of people like myself think that this is a February drop, which is still six months away because it's still four, four and a half months left of, of 2022. And then you get through January, you get into February. That's six months from now, folks. I, I'm wondering whether or not this is the January drop at this point, because if they're going to show 30 minutes, that means they're confident. But let me uh, catch up on some of the Super Chat. We had one, uh, let's see... Uh, Sith Lord uh, drops an outstanding five dollars super chat and says Sony might have screwed themselves out of getting a better deal in the future for Microsoft or other companies. Hope everyone has a great day. We also have Maxi Komen. Now it says it's ARS fifty dollars who drops a super chat. Doesn't say anything. And on the second super chat of ARS twenty dollars says uh, uh, says I'm waiting for that sixty second video. Oh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for revenge on that 60 second video uh, for so long. And of course, he's talking about this is how you share games uh, on the bright side drops an outstanding uh, $10 super chat and says, what if Sony's marketing agreement? Oh, no, I read that one already. OK, I read that one. I read uh, Tyson's Edwin Garcia Thanaros, good friend of the program, great friend of the program. Actually, he's been a channel member for many, 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 many years. Drops an outstanding uh, ten dollars super chat and says, "Thanks, Boom, for your podcast marathon this week." Yes, folks, this is podcast number seven, and I'm going to be honest with you, <laughs> I am spent. Uh, I, I guessed it on RDX on Tuesday. I guessed it yesterday on World of Gaming with Boxenberger, and I have done five of my own productions this week. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm spent. I, honestly, I, I, I'm starting to wear it a little thin. I'm going to be back at it because as soon as the show is done, I'm going to start working on next week's stuff. I, I can't stop. I, I love doing this. Like I love interacting with this community. I love talking about games. And the fact that I have a platform still blows my mind. Um, 
<laughs> Mandingo McThickens. That is a name that you can never forget. He drops an outstanding and very generous $20 super chat. It says, hey, boom. Uh, can Arnold hop on the mic and tell us how girly men like Sony are acting? It's fascinating how hypocritical they are. They are sh they they've been shady. The the, the shady backroom deals. Uh, there is something to be said about total PS numbers to software ratio. Arnold, are you there, sir? And can you talk about whether or not Sony is acting like a girly man? Yes, I'm believable. I can't believe how many of the girly men are out here running the back rooms of the Sony. I mean, I haven't seen this many backroom deals. This crazy stuff that's going on since the kids were trying to sell cigarettes in the lavatories back when I was in school. It is crazy. They're scared. They're scared crapless out there right now. They're scared that Microsoft is flexing the big muscles, just like I used to do when I go up against Lou Frigno back in the day. I'll get out there. So, yeah, everybody's running for the hills. Microsoft is coming hard to charge my the bull and they're going to get the horns so that's what happens if you keep picking on the kid too long eventually he just might kick you in the nads and right now microsoft they got the big balls and sony they don't want no part of it yeah well i mean you know that the good stuff you know what while we have you on the microphone uh did you get a chance to see the new predator movie prey on hulu what'd you think no, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to go see it yet. I mean, uh, you know, the only Predator movie that should still exist is the one that I was in. That is still the best Predator movie out there, period. It is still I mean, number you can't one. Have yes, a great it is. Predator movie without Arnold being in the movie. Now, you know, maybe one of these days I come back and do a sequel. I might be like 100 years old. But uh, but to come back in there, I would do one maybe if sometime if they hire me, it would be great. I would like to do that, but uh, I haven't seen it yet. I want to catch up on that and be great. But um, for now, uh, yeah, I'm just uh, just enjoying life. It's good. Yeah. Well, listen. Uh, we hope that they bring Dutch back in, even as a cameo, and they could uh, de-age you. They've done it before, so don't worry about if you're a hundred. Uh, as long as you can talk, I think you're going to be okay, Arnold. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you might want listen. to click this one last one. Go now, get yourself some game pass. Do it. <laughs> I love it. Arnold, thank you. Your 50 cents is going to be mailed out ASAP. The check will not bounce this time, I promise. Thank you very much for that. Uh, listen, we got 30 minutes left to the show, folks. And I want to talk about an article that comes the way of VGC247.com. Uh, listen, this was this was uh, written by, um, I believe it's Osin. I can't pronounce the last name. It's K-U-H-N-E-K. Uh, and they 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 put on this. I, I, I like using their stuff. Uh, they said Redfall is making a 30-minute long appearance at QuakeCon. And uh, this is what the article has to say. Arcane's next vampire-ridden title, Redfall, is getting a 30-minute slot at the upcoming QuakeCon, as confirmed by Bethesda. QuakeCon, unsurprisingly, is generally all things Quake, but other Bethesda titles do now uh, do now make an appearance, and everything is set to get started on August 18th at 6 p.m. BST, just under two weeks away. And it looks like shortly after the welcoming uh, opening segment that kicks things off starting at 6 p 6 15 p.m. Uh, uh, BST, there will be a 30-minute slot that dives into the not the not so idea uh, the not uh, the, that jumps into the idea the Redfall single player gameplay and they actually pulled this from Eurogamer.com. Uh, look, I want to go to the guests first. We'll start with Noof. Noof, look, Redfall. We had a chance to see it uh, at E3. We've seen some uh, some some you know some CG prior to. Uh, the uh, the game making a, some uh, a gameplay appearance at this year's E3. I think it looks phenomenal. I honestly do. Uh, I absolutely love the fact that yes, if you want to get down with your friends, there is way uh, there's a ton of stuff that you can do. But if you want to sit down with your headphones in the dark, which is a lot of times the way I play, and you want that single player experience where it's just you in the game and you're getting to enjoy and i think that's a big deal I, I really think that the single player experience is incredibly important as much as the multiplayer this has the potential new to be one of those games 
that brings both communities, both single player and multiplayer, into the equation. What is your excitement so far for Redfall? And are you sh shocked, as I am, that they're going to get they're going to show off thirty minutes of it? Um. <laughs> Yeah, I'll keep this short and sweet because, to be quite <laughs> honest with you guys, I, I'm not super excited for Redfall, and I don't know why. Every trailer I've seen, I've, I've just it's kind of hit me very mute. It okay. just looks like Good another game that um, you know that you're gonna enjoy for, you know, you're gonna enjoy for the first week, and then after that, it'll be lost and forgotten, much like uh, Back for Blood, you know. And that's where I'm kind of scared that it becomes a game similar to that. I mean, Back for Blood's biggest problem was the fact that. Um, you know, too much of the game is centered around uh, repetitive play and coming back to earn stuff to keep getting further. You know what I mean? Like it, it, they they took the simplicity out of a game that uh, that Left for Dead used to have, and they just added a lot of complications that didn't need to be there. Now I'm kind of getting off topic, but I'm just going to say like I see some similarities, and I'm hoping that this isn't the case. I do love the fact that yes, they are going to tailor make the campaign to essentially be you know a, a single player focused um you know romp as well because sometimes games that uh try to do two things at the same time don't end up being a very very well or very good uh and you can feel that you can feel like it feels like something like parts of the story are sort of tacked on and or added or you know, or, or or watered down so to speak you know because it takes um it takes a lot of story great storytelling and certainly a lot of extra horsepower processing power to do stuff on a multiplayer basis so and still have the game running well i mean like i said i'm happy that people are happy and excited for the game it's just uh it's just not something that's really high on my radar and i'll definitely watch it and maybe things will change but um it is what it is it's just not one of the games that uh that, like i said that, that moves the needle a whole lot for me right now well, you know what's interesting? Listen, I, I love the honesty, and that's and, and that's what we love about you. And uh, we can't wait for you to come back on the podcast scene uh, and uh, and 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 give us the honest noof that we know and love. Uh, but what is what is interesting about what you're saying is that because you don't have to go out and physically buy the game, you can try this out on Xbox Game Pass. And and if you if it's not your thing. You, you you know you 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 know you delete it from your hard drive and you just keep it moving but that's that's the beauty that right there is the beauty of Xbox Game Pass where uh you're going you might play a game that you didn't know you needed in your life and you might play a game that you thought you did and you're like that not just not for me and uh listen i mean again um i have always been a fan since uh since arcane came in on the scene uh with uh dishonor I was a fan of this. I didn't beat Prey. I got about halfway through it, and it was it was okay. You know what I'm saying? I loved Deathloop. I didn't beat it. I bought it on the PlayStation Five because I didn't want to wait, but I didn't beat it. I got about halfway through it. I'm going. That's a, that's again. My backlog is as tall as I am, and I'm six feet, so I got to get back to it. Uh, I am incredibly excited for this because I love vampires. I love the the dark nature of, of what they're doing. I love that you're going to be able to have randomized weapons with different powers. I think this is this this is shaping up to be like one of those water cooler games that you're going to ask, hey, did you find this? And your friend's going to be like, no. Oh, we got to get together. I got to show you this weapon. I Again, I, I appreciate the honesty. And you know what? Not every game is for every gamer, uh, new. So we'll see if your opinion changes because uh, you are a multiplayer dude. You do have... Uh, you have been one of the uh, the uh, staples in community game night in the community. So maybe this is something that you return to uh, with community game night because you want to hang out with people from the community. And also yeah, potentially. Game. It could be the whole vampire thing, too. I, I don't know. Like, I'm just kind of fearing that this starts a new trend where, you know, we go from the 5 billion zombie games to 5 billion vampire <laughs> games. You know what I mean? It's just... Uh, you know, every time you get a successful game, everybody, try, everybody tries to mimic that or copy it or come up with their own take. And and that that's sort of part of what just like, okay, you know, uh, I hope the game is good. Like I said, I'm excited. And because, you, like you said, boom, it's in Game Pass. I have no real reason not to at least give it an honest go. And it might really surprise me. And I'll be like, man, this 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 thing is the bomb. But uh, as I sit right now, I need to see more of it before I decide, I, you know, that it's a game that's going to be worth my time.
Yep, no, good stuff, as always. Uh, Mav, I want to read you uh, the press release from Arcane Austin. This is what they had to say. The team at Arcane Austin takes you inside their upcoming squad-based vampire shooter with new insights, gameplay details, and more. Reads the description of the event. Whether there will be any other actual gameplay shown or not, well, we don't know until that until that actually happens. But I would imagine they're going to show off stuff that we haven't seen before. For you, as someone that does play a lot of multiplayer with Pong and Caitlyn and, uh, and, and and Psychonauts and a lot of people, three bit, uh, is this something that's that that that's on? your radar and are you excited that they're going to see 30 minutes of it come uh next week yeah dude um i'm looking forward to what they're going to show i hope they just show some like straight gameplay and i want to really want to learn about more of the like other systems right because i i'm already kind of sold on the game because it's a arcane game it's their first big like multiplayer co-op type experience as well so i'm just really curious about how it's going to be because I haven't we haven't really played a game like that from them before. Uh, but they're saying that a lot of the heart of what makes their game special is still going to be in this. So that's kind of has me sold on it. Um, but, you know, I'm just ready for Xbox to have a freaking first party game man, like a big one. You know, I yeah. mean, it's just like more than yeah. anything else. It's like just that's going to probably be the next one. I, I do think um, obviously after Pentiment, but um, I think you're right on the January, February train potentially because uh, they didn't really uh, give us release dates on those delays, but they did say early 2023. And if we remember Redfall was slated for summer this year, right? right? So that would lead us to believe that it should be before Starfield anyway. So I'm hoping that's our early 2023 game to kind of get us something to look forward to in a few months. Maybe from January now. you're hoping. I'm hoping man, that'd be nice. I mean, I, I think first quarter for sure. Right. Um, but I'm hoping January or February, and maybe we'll even get a release date with that 30 minute, uh, with with that 30 minute demo. Um, but I do they have they showed like screenshots, a lot of like the loot systems and stuff, and I really want to learn more about how that's going to work and and how the abilities are going to play off of each other more, right? Because they showed some of that with the with the trailers and stuff about how you know you have one one of your uh, teammates does an ability and the other one kind of plays off of it and does yeah. like another ability and they kind of create different scenarios and uh a lot of these games stick to three players you know what i mean but i think this one's four right four so players correct it's um, you and three buddies. thank you yeah. for not doing a three-player co-op game so we always <laughs> have that one person that gets right out because everybody has to only do three players and they always say well we just couldn't figure out the balancing you know what i mean no come on just give us four player co-op and I'm I'm super happy that's going uh going to be the case too. But it, again, like the vampire thing is super cool to me too because we're we're so used to seeing zombies and zombies and zombies. So this is going to have a chance to be a, a different kind of experience a little bit with that. And um, uh, I think the story is going to be a big focal point here. I think I think you're going to have a lot of that player chatter in the dialogue with, between the characters and stuff as you're kind of moving through. It's going to kind of had to add to the story development and stuff and uh I mean, kind of like guardians right you know we played guardians of the galaxy um now it wasn't co-op obviously but you know you had you had your player chatter constantly as you're walking through the levels and stuff and they're kind of talking to each other that added so much to that game and i feel like uh, from what we've seen from the trailers and stuff I'm, I'm hoping this has a little bit of that in there as well just to add to that uh, depth of the characters um but yeah i'm looking forward to it it's not like my number one most anticipated game by, by any means, right? But it's definitely up there. I'm, and um, I, again, for those that aren't excited for it, you know, like uh, Boom was saying, and, and, and you know, if you know, it's Game Pass is that opportunity to try it. Yep. Um, I was not excited at all for As Dusk Falls, right? I, it was like, I was sick of seeing it. I'm like, this game, like, it's just not for me. The uh, art style, the way the stop motion, uh, video stuff was just distracting i didn't like the way they were showcasing it and and then one of my favorite things i played this year right oh so, wow that's good to and know. that's because it was in game pass right yep. I, I wouldn't have bought it day one you know maybe after enough people sold me on it or whatever i give it a go but um you know that's one of the beauties of a service like that because you're trying other things and, and playing other things that maybe you wouldn't have but then you discover oh that was actually really cool and then maybe you know what you it wasn't for you but guess what you didn't you didn't go out and spend $60, $70 on something that it turned out you didn't really like. And then you got to worry about reselling it for 
half the cost or whatever, right? So um, I, uh, I'm i looking forward to it, man. I think uh, we're going to have some fun playing some co-op um, yes. on that game for sure. Yeah, no, good stuff, brother. Absolutely. Listen, let's uh, let, let's uh, let me just thank Tyson Buhajo uh, in the chat. I think I might have got it right the second time. Drops a very generous eight dollar super chat and says Minecraft is a gaming genre all on its own. No Sony studio can replicate it. Sony didn't say anything back then. Just now, they are scared of Xbox Game Pass. I absolutely agree. I think they have some serious concerns. For sure. Dreadpool, let's bring you in on the conversation, brother. Obviously, you're someone that enjoys multiplayer as well. Uh, in the story that I pulled from VG247.com, they have confirmed a 30-minute gameplay segment after the opening uh discussion at one of the one of the bigger events that's actually happening this year. You know, COVID has ruined most of these in-person events. Uh QuakeCon is a big deal. Uh, I'm still expecting uh, the next Quake to be announced there. I think we're going to get that announcement. I think that the Quake reboot that's on the lines and level of, of Doom 2016 that has been rumored for quite some time is going to be there. But w- again, we don't know. This has been confirmed. This isn't a this isn't a suggestion. This is this is going to be there. I think this is a really big deal. Are you excited for Red Bull? Well, you all know that I wasn't excited for for the longest time. And you're time a horror that, guy too, right? Yeah, yeah. But it just it, the the way that they showed it before didn't appeal to me. This last one that they did show, where they actually showed some sort of gameplay, made it more appealing. And you know, here's the the beauty of this, right? Because Newf mentioned it before. You know, th- these type of games usually have you know limited because it's like once the one knocks it out of the park everybody else is a me too yeah. they've altered it, this also right you could actually play the same character so you're not limited to you can only pick one and now i gotta pick this other one that i don't even like but everybody <laughs> wants this one type of character now we could all we could all play the same stupid character if we want and, and have at it and that's the beauty of the mechanics on that and like math pointed out why do you stick with three? Oh, because we can't figure it out. No, you can figure it out. Because if back in the 360, when, when Ghost Recon can do 16 players as a co-op, why can't we do this now? You know, and I still have issues with four with teams of four. You know, we had teams of six back in the day, you know, and, and why do we have to limit this? You know, let's open it up. I understand certain certain aspects of it. Yes, you might want to limit it. So but it maybe maybe think about six because there are times that you know there's a fifth and sixth player wanting to play, but the the four the first four that got together already playing, and the other two are left to you know at one at a time coming in. Hey, what, uh, all right, never mind. I'll have to go somewhere else. But you know what they showed this time around was really cool. Um, they actually showed the gameplay, which made it more interesting, and and having the combined character. You know, or the same character also plays off of the interesting part of it because now, you're, like I said, you're not limited to one person playing that that character. So now you can actually have two different play styles playing together as the same character, and that can also change up the playability of this game. You know, make it more interesting because now if we can use a special move in conjunction with each other to like double boost this move. That would be kind of cool, you know, and this this is all just guessing here. Um, and hopefully they show something. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm actually interested in watching this because it might ruin my hype for it again. And I might be back to like, nah, I, I, I'll try it out because it's in Game Pass. But, you know, and that's that's kind of the, the whole beauty of Game Pass, right? Blockbuster, um, uh, Hollywood video, right? You're renting the game. You try it out. If you like it, you like it. If you don't. Not a big deal. Uh, you move on to the next game, you know. And if you really want to buy it, you can buy it. You know, no one's stopping you. And that and that's cool that they're giving you this. They're giving us information. And in the background, for those of us that have it, it's you know we know we paid for it, but we say it's free, even though it, we know we paid for it. So it's not free, but to us, it's free. So it's a free trial, you know. But it, and it's not a, a curated demo trial where you're only playing so much of the game and it's not a true 
um, semblance of what the game is supposed to be because they just cut out a little chapter and made it this and that. And then you go back and play and you find out that they actually took out the level because they decided that the level wasn't good enough to be in the game. And you're like, what was, what was the point of the demo? You know, you're actually getting a chance in there. So I'm, I'm still hopeful. I'm, I'm actually more excited than I have been in the past, but I'm hesitant because of the past. <laughs> no, I mean, listen, it makes it makes perfect sense. And again, the, the, the beauty of it is that it, you can try it without any risk of losing money. Uh, uh, and uh, that's the beauty of Xbox Game Pass. And uh, it's going to be one of the big AAA bombs from ne- for next year. Uh, yeah. And like I said, I, I, I hope it is. Uh, I mean, look, I put it to this way. Just because of their pedigree, I expect it to be a really good game. I'm hoping that it hits... Uh, to be one of those uh, multiplayer games that people continue to come back to, that they will support years after uh, with new content. And uh, if, if they do and they hit it out of the park, it's, it's going to be a big win for Microsoft because it is going to be early on in the year and uh, it is in Game Pass and it is a multiplayer game, which is Microsoft, what is what Xbox is known for. Uh, but good stuff, but as always. Yeah, and see, and that's the beauty of this, right? Mav, Psychonauts, and myself played uh, one of the, the the dinosaur games for six hours into it. Second Extinction? Probably. Yeah. Second, Second Extinction is, six, a, is a gem. I love it. I don't. I don't. But six hours into it, I got into it. Yeah, but be, it was because I was playing with friends. So this, yes. this could be one of those things, too. So don't be quick to judge because this might not be your game. But once you get into it with playing with friends, it could alter it. It just took me six hours with Second Extinction to, to yeah, get I, into I, it and actually enjoy it. I think this game's a lot different than what a lot of people are right. assuming. But just because of comparisons, I hear a lot of the comparisons out there with like games like Back for Blood or Second Extinction and all these things. And like this isn't just like a typical looter shooter type game. Right. Like I think this is more of a story based, campaign based game. Um, I would think more Borderlands like than these other games, right? And uh, it was originally like open world, uh, like completely, and they kind of had to. It was like too big, and they like kind of dialed it back, kind of into like the sections, kind of like Borderlands ish, right? So I think when I'm thinking of this game, what I have had seen the most comparisons to from p- uh, people that have seen it and and played it and tried it out is like a Borderlands type experience, and not necessarily like a a back for blood or like a second extinction or like one of these like loot grind games. Right. And and that's why on our preference, don't quit. Don't be quick to judge. Yeah. Uh, you may want to need to try it out with, with a friend or mm-hmm. two or three, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Get into it that way because there are times that some games just might not hit you until you play with, with some friends. And then when it clicks, boom, there you, you get sucked in. So yeah. you, you'll enjoy yourself. Yeah, absolutely, Fuzzy. Let's uh, let's let's have you close out this topic with your mm-hmm. opinion. Uh, this is obviously coming from Arcane. They know how to tell great stories. Yeah. At the, at the center of of Redfall, there is expected to be a fantastic, uh, well told story. Uh, that's on top of uh, a looter shooter, which again seems like a perfect combination to me. Uh, and you know, we've heard a lot of uh, comparisons for Left for Dead. Uh, we know this is going to be open world. What what are your expectations? And are you a little taken aback that we are getting 30 minutes of potentially never before seen gameplay at QuakeCon? I'm, I'm glad that they're doing this. Um, although I, I was hoping that they would also do some of the uh, Starfield stuff. But I'm, I'm figuring based on the timing, it's probably that the, uh, the Redfall is closer to release for the early part of next year. Uh, with Starfield probably being a couple of months or, or however long after that. But um, my big thing is, like, I'm, I'm hyped for the game in the way that, like, for most looter shooters, I'm, I'm thinking of this being kind of like a cross between, like, Division, which I'm a big Division stand, I guess you could say, me, me and, too. Yes. <laughs> and and Borderlands with with vampires, basically. So I'm, I'm really anxious, well, not anxious, but I'm really excited to see the systems as far as the different loot drops and things along those lines like i know that they have like a 
they showed briefly at like the uh, the Xbox uh, E3 show uh, some of the skill tree stuff. So I want to see more of the the weapon and uh, like talents or traits and things like that. And I know that there were some other, I guess, you know, things that they revealed as far as like the the choices that you make as far as your skill tree and 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 different character traits and things like that. And people had some, you know, issues with or or some some uh concerns with but i i think they've been listening to a lot of the feedback of the community and i want to see what they have basically have to show us but it's it's going to be awesome having that you know 30 minutes of gameplay much like like uh like we've said earlier uh, with uh, the gameplay from the e3 show and everything a lot of people were kind of thinking it was more of like a back for blood type of deal prior to seeing that or or may not have had as much interest in it and the E3 unveiling kind of helped, you know, garner a lot more interest for it. I mean, the, the minute they said looter shooter and then the fact that it's arcane, that that was enough for me. But uh, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm 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 hoping that they. I'm pretty confident in arcane being able to display this game well. Like, even though I don't think it's the exact same studio that did Deathloop because they're kind of broken into two type of thing. But, yeah, there's two, two different studios. But yeah. um, they even though a lot of people are like, oh, I'm tired of seeing like Deathloop trailers and things like that. But I, I loved every minute of everything I saw about Deathloop and looking forward to when that one comes around, too. But uh, yeah, Redfall, I, I, I'm hoping they go into more depth as far as the gameplay on like the not just the skill tree, but the weapons, the loot, the the talents what it may look like if like kind of like what drip pool saying if all four people are playing or playing as the same character see what that might be like and make sure that there's still synergies because of the choices you made with your skill tree and things like that so man i'm, I'm looking forward to it another quake or a, a potential quake announcement a new quake announcement that would be awesome but uh, I, I would have a feeling by now we, we would have it would have already been kind of leaked. Uh, not that no, Xbox I, hasn't I, gotten I better. They're holding it so close to the vest, dude. <laughs> like I, I think this is one of those surprises that's going to come out of nowhere. But again, only time is going to tell. Quake Kong 2022 is next week. Yeah. Uh, but listen, I want to thank folks. We had over 625 viewers today, uh, which is bonkers. Uh, this is still a small channel. We are officially, folks. Uh, 47 subs away from 11k uh i see a lot of new faces here uh, i just want to throw it out there that if you are finding the channel for the first time uh i ask that you uh give us a shot and consider subscribing um obviously i do four normally four live shows a week um and uh you know listen i have i have a blast with it we don't use console war nonsense i mean listen we're gonna have to talk there are gonna be times where we're gonna give the business to sony there's going to be times where we're going to have to give the business to Microsoft. And, well, Nintendo is Nintendo. They will always walk to their own drum. Uh, but I want to thank, hey, thanks, uh, Game Plato in the chat. This is 11K. Yes, indeed. Uh, definitely appreciate you being here, brother. Uh, but listen, folks, that's your breakfast with Boom for this amazing Friday. I don't know whether you where you are in the world, but New York, it is gorgeous today. Lots of sun, plenty of nice wind, as opposed to Monday and Tuesday. It was oppressive here. It was over 100 with the heat index, and it was awful. So thankfully, the AC is off. We're just enjoying ourselves. Hopefully, you enjoyed yourself enough to hit that like button. Let's get to the outros, and we're going to start first with our special guest. And Noof, you have an announcement. Let's talk about your return to podcasting. Yeah, it's 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 been a while coming. I mean, for some people, perhaps it's not long enough. They wish I'd stay away forever. But hey, you know what? I'm starting to feel that itch again. And no, it's not uh, scrabies or nothing like that. It's, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I just can't wait to get out there, you know, after being a guest on your podcast and a few others in recent months. And of course, you know, with gaming news starting to pick up and get a little bit juicy again. And uh, the fall coming, which is typically a slower time of the year for me in a lot of aspects. I figure it's, a, it's as good a time as any to jump back in. Uh, I'm going to start that mantle with Gaming After Dark that will uh, resume on September the 6th. Usual time, usual place. as Tuesday nights, uh, 10 Eastern, uh, 8 Mountain Time. Looking forward to get back to it. It's going to be some changes in the panel uh, due to conflicting time constraints and commitments from the other guys. But I can tell you that the wise old gamer will be with me. And uh, I still got a few people in, uh, that I've sort of approached or I'm considering and we'll, we'll go from there. So 
you know, I'm like I said, I'm looking for that that um, that gaming after dark aesthetic where I think there's going to be a good jive with not only gaming news but you know our personalities and and, and the kind of humor that uh, try to bring to that show. So looking forward to get back into it, man. It's going to be awesome. As far as uh, my other show, you know, Good Morning Xbox, Axel's done a magnificent job on his channel running that show on Sunday mornings. Um, and uh, in, in due time, I may return to that one. But uh, like I said, that's a little later down the road. So again, September the 6th, guys, Gaming After Dark, you can expect Arnold, Safe House, and uh, Cletus to make their returns there, I'm sure. Looking forward to getting back behind the microphone and, um, you know, and, and, and rocking out with all you guys again, the chat, uh, all you guys, uh, all your podcasts, fantastic stuff. Um, looking forward to it, man. It's going to be good times. Thanks so much for having me, Boom. Today is awesome. Great turnout in the chats today, live chat, and uh, fantastic topics of discussion. Like I said, you only get into two of them. I knew the first one was going to be uh, was going to be juicy, so there you have it. And uh, have a great day, everybody, and we'll, we'll catch you soon. Thanks, brother. That definitely appreciate you being here. Mav, you and Pong uh, uh, knocked it out of the park. You do a lot on your channel. A lot of people may or may not know where they can check you out on YouTube. Where can find the, the, the multitude of shows you do weekly? And uh, where can people reach out to you and strike up a conversation on social media? Yeah, if you want to strike up a conversation, do that over on Fun Speculation on Twitter. Um, appreciate everybody who checks out all of our content as well. But if you have not yet, uh, go over to YouTube and search up Fun Speculation on there as well. Uh, we got three shows we do, plus I game stream quite a bit. And yep. we just have uh, random nonsense at times we'll go live randomly kind of like boom does sometimes he just goes live after something big drops or whatever and uh but you know we have a lot of fun um but we did have our 100th episode of xbox ultimate podcast last friday yeah and I, this... i'm so sorry i missed that dude i wanted to oh, be here to celebrate good. with you guys but my back was a freaking disaster if you didn't know i threw my back after uh, after surviving covid my back went out last wednesday i'm still not 100 yeah. percent. you've had Man, a hell of a couple weeks boom it's been it, yeah it, it, it it's yeah. been a, a tough 30 days to say the least meanwhile <laughs> doing seven shows this week as well like holy crap um, a lot of the times when i go off camera i'm walking off doing the old man's track <laughs> yeah I'm just like well, okay, all right the show's over um yeah i uh yeah, I appreciate everybody uh, checking that out as well. We had a blast last, last Friday because we got to have Psychonauts, my good buddy here. He came into town. 3-Bit came into town. That's and awesome. We had I saw the video. Absolutely... You, I, I saw the In the Closet video. That was, oh, that was yeah. awesome. <laughs> that was, yeah, dude, that was a surprise. We had an absolute blast. It was it was great. And um, besides, X, well, hey, we got episode 101 tonight, actually, at 9 p.m. Eastern time. So uh, tune in uh, to that over on Fun Speculation for Xbox Ultimate. Then... Um, as Boom mentioned, Pong and I do have a show as well. We do on Thursdays called PM in the PM. So we had a show last night. We had a lot of fun talking about a lot of the same stuff we talked about today. Um, and then also Mondays, we have Fun Speculation Podcast at 10 p.m. Eastern, where we kind of talk about all the consoles and everything with, with Fuzzy here and uh, uh, Jasper and, and 3-Bit and Psychonauts. And we have a great time over there as well. So uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, tuning into this show. It was great to uh, see Dread again. I haven't podcasted with you in a while, Dread, so it was absolutely awesome. Yeah, and great to see Noof back. And Fuzzy, I see you all the time, man. So, yes, but yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for, for being here, Mav. And uh, yeah, go check out the podcast tonight. Uh, what they do every Friday. Uh, love what Mav and the and, and team does. It's just a group of people, a group of friends, a group of family, just hanging out, talking games. It's a good, it's a good, it's a great podcast. You definitely should check that out. Uh, breaking bread with dread. Uh, let's go dread, but let's, let, let's, let's send people to check out this very unique way of podcasting where you do your interviews and where could people reach out to you on social media? Well, first and foremost, as always, thank you H and every one of the 600 plus in chats for coming out here, liking and sharing. I know you all didn't like, so make sure you, you know, before we finish this episode, like it. Um, and definitely check us out next week when we come back. Uh, but yes, Breaking Bread with Dread. I'm, I'm doing some unique stuff. You saw I've already released a, a couple test videos. Um, they're the 360 ones on the YouTube channel. So uh, if you guys like it, I, I, I'm getting really good feedback on it. Um, so, I mean, it actually boosted my channel up to 458. So it's not too bad Ooh, for... for nice. Yeah. So it, it's... Uh, 
but I've learned a few things and, you know, we're going to try to implement a few other things. So definitely check out uh, Breaking Bread with Dread. It's on Anchor, Apple, uh, Spotify, it, all that fun, all the podcasting places. So you got some audio there and Spotify is also doing video. So the famous Bob Camp I mentioned earlier gave me a promo. So if you guys know, Ren and dope, Stimpy, dude, that was that was awesome. Right. Yeah. So I was I was like. That's not exactly what I was looking for, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, yeah, you, you know, all the places on Twitter, the O's are actually zeros, but every, most of the other places, the O's are actually O's. So, but yes, thank you all for coming in. Um, and it's, it, it's, it's always fun to hang out with Noob and Mav, uh, whether together or separate in, in their own little groups. And, you know, that's the beauty of it, right? We're all a bigger community. We're all a bigger family. Indeed. Even though we have our little, our little little clicks and stuff like that, we would say, but we're all a family, and it's always fun hanging out. And Fuzzy, don't think I left you out. <laughs> You're part of the family here too. Indeed, he is. You know? Well, listen, Dread, it's great to have you back, brother. We missed you, you when you were gone for you know real life stuff going on, but it's great to have you each here each and every Friday to give your very very detailed opinion, which you did two great lengths today and of course we love you for that last in no way least fuzzy belvedere the guy that must be dying in his chair watching me drive playing this game <laughs> dirt five one of my favorite games from last year dude i if you have folks if you haven't played dirt five please for the love of joe dr try this game it is so it's probably look i'll say this forza i'm sorry the, the folks over at, at, at playground the driving in, in in this game, in Dirt 5, is chef's kiss, ladies and gentlemen. But, Buzzy, tell mm -hmm. everyone if they want to learn a thing or three about the driving genre and check out your YouTube channel. Where could they do that? But more importantly, reach out to you and strike up a conversation on social media. Well, I want to start off by thanking everybody that came out here as well and and. Man, awesome, awesome panel on here today with the guests, New, uh, Newcomb and, and Mav, my extended family. Uh, and man, good to be on here with you, Dread. And man, I always love being on here with you, Boom. Um, just awesome topics, awesome time. For anybody that wants to hear my ramblings on anything gaming, just follow me on Twitter at fuzzy underscore Belvedere. Uh, you can also find my YouTube channel for anything racing related, uh, Forza or Gran Turismo, or even hopefully coming soon, Need for Speed, hopefully before the end of the year. But um, yeah, just search Fuzzy underscore Belvedere on YouTube. Uh, you can also find me on Xbox Ultimate on Fun Speculations channel at 9 p.m. tonight. Man, it was a great time last week, and we plan on continuing that party on to this Friday night as well. Um, Check us out, Fun Speculations channel at 9 p.m. Eastern. Oh, yeah, 9 p.m. Eastern time tonight. And then PTK Blam's channel on Saturday with me, uh, PTK, Pong. And basically, we're going to have a, uh, 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 a special guest. We're going to have Spike Psychonauts on there with oh, us nice, on there dude. today. Awesome. So it's, it's going to be a, a nice you know, conversation talking about some upcoming games and, and things along those lines and what we're looking forward to and you know the coming year and stuff like that and then on monday you can find me on fsp with mav as well as three bit psychonauts and lore master jasper at uh, 10 p.m eastern time on monday uh, also on fun speculations channel but and i can't wait till next friday morning to be on here with you guys again <laughs> on breakfast with boom looking forward to it but thank there you, you go. well it's great to have you here brother thank you so much ladies and gentlemen enjoy your weekend thank you so much for the incredible super chats that have come in obviously we use those to do the big giveaways and we still have three of those left uh i want to close out the show folks with something that is important to me hopefully one day it'll be important to you that's something that my dad taught me with kids and he would say craig treat others how you want to be treated. Also, it doesn't cost anything to be nice. You live by those rules, son. I can guarantee you, you're going to have an awesome day. So take care, everyone. And we'll see you next week on the newest episode of Breakfast with Boom. Take care, everyone, and have an amazing weekend.